Hi, this is Dr. Pat. We're looking at matrices to solve system of equations. And one of the approaches that I've been using is I haven't actually got into the nitty gritty part of actually how to solve a matrix. I've just been basically translating between system of equations and matrices. And now basically I'm skipping over all that middle steps because quite frankly I think we're going to be using technology to do that part and I'm getting to the end so how do we interpret the results that we have yeah I'm skipping over a lot of stuff in the middle but that's okay because hopefully this will make more sense going this approach than another way alright so basically you may recall from the previous uh, uh, video we were looking at the results interpreting how do we interpret matrices now this is our solution matrix here why I'm calling it that way or it, that it's called that way is notice that we've got the ones in our diagonal here that's the diagonal right there and then we have zeros above and below these ones and in this last column over here because this is an augmented matrix because we have uh, four rows four rows here and then we have five columns and that fifth column there is those are those constant those are the numbers on the other side of the equal sign and so in this case this matrix is really cool because this is telling us our solution x equals negative 3 y equals 11 z equals 6 and then a fourth variable I'm calling w w equals negative 4 so this matrix is very nice for us because it gives us our information of exactly what our variables are equal to our solution set now what happens if we use the technology again we translate our system of equations into a matrix we use the technology to do all the grunt work for us you're going to see that it's actually quite a, quite straightforward then basically what we're looking at here is what do we do uh, how do we interpret the results that the technology is given back to us that's the key here how do we interpret the results so let's take a look at this one matrix here on the left the part that I'm really focusing on here is this third row you see because the first row is telling me x equals 8 second row tells me y equals 9 but the third row I'm looking for a 1 there's supposed to be a 1 there and it's not a 1 it's a 0 so I'm going like whoa I've got zeros and then a number 5 well that's actually quite bad for us that's when the system blows up because 0 does not equal 5 because remember if we translate these equations these are the variables equals 5 because that's what this column there is and so 0 never equals 5 so we're gonna basically say that's a bad no solution from that one now how about the one on the right here on the upper right here well I'm once again I'm looking there at the bottom row there and I'm seeing a row of zeros that's actually quite okay for us that basically tells us that we have um, we well we have three equations with two variables in this uh, uh, system three rows coming from three equations two uh, three columns and this is the, basically our constant column here's X and Y so we got X equals 4 Y equals 7 and then this is telling us that our third equation that we had in our system is not providing any additional information uh, we the uh, problem that we're dealing with an application of this basically is telling us that this third equation is a combination of the first two so it, it's not really any extreme information that we have there to, to, to come up with an extra or different solution so that's what's happening there so if you get a row of zeros that's okay that just basically means that uh, uh, we have solution otherwise now that's for that part. this third matrix also has a row of zeros but it's a little bit different here because we also have this column of zeros okay so what we have here is we have three rows just like the previous one but because we have four columns that's telling me that we have three variables the X column the Y column and the Z column but this third row what, what happens how do we interpret that well zero equals zero is a good uh, good statement to have but in this one basically what we have is we have x equals 8 y equals 9 and because of this row of zeros this we get this weird statement z equals z now 
to us math people that makes a lot of sense to us but to everybody else basically what that really means is z can be anything you want it to be so this is a weird kind of way but us math geeks understand this but what we're really seeing here is z can be any number you want to pick x has got to be nine i mean x has got to be eight y has got to be nine z can be anything you want and so basically what we're looking at is is the possibility uh you know of um, things piling on top of each other you know a 3d line doing some some weird funky stuff going on there okay so now I got another example for you and so I've got this matrix here very similar to the one we just did so we've got a row at the bottom row is zeros that's what we had there but in the column there in the Z column I've got a 2 and a negative 5 there whereas before we had 0 and a 0 there so what happens with this what's going on well basically because this is a row of zeros that means things can happen uh, we're okay if that was zero equals a different number then we'd say no solution but because we've got zero equals zero that's allowed we can we can interpret this so one of the first things I would do until you get really comfortable with this is just go ahead and translate back remember this is our X y and z so this first row is really saying x plus 2z equals 8 the second uh, row is telling us y minus 5z equals 9 and then the bottom one because of the zeros 0 equals 0 or z equals z z excuse me too many z's going around hope that doesn't make you fall asleep now, there's a bad joke there but let's move on all right so basically what we have here is you can translate this matrix if, you, if it's if you're uncomfortable with it still yet, you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to make too, many, too big of a jump. Just go ahead and first translate this. And then what we do is we take these first equation, solve for x, take that second equation, solve for y. And when we do that, we now have a statement here. But now the key thing here is this, is that in that first equation, x depends on what we pick for z. Y depends on what we pick for Z and we can choose anything we want for Z once we pick the number for Z then we can calculate the numbers for X and Y where in the previous example because of the zeros here we knew what X and Y were and Z we could pick anything we wanted to in this case this new uh, second example I have here um, we can pick anything we want for Z but once we pick a number that will then determine what X and Y are so X and Y depends on what we pick for Z and that's why we call it a dependent solution okay so hopefully we're, you're getting the idea you're getting this comfort level with matrices how to translate from a uh, system of equations to a matrix and now in this video we were translating our results back into that system of equation idea about the X Y's and Z's so that's the key next videos we'll start playing around and really get into that grunt work of how you actually solve a system of equations thanks and have a good day